CrossFit includes more different types of movement than any other sport. From pull-ups and compound lifts to snatches and box jumps. At the end, CrossFit is physical education for adults, right? But like any other sport, injuries can happen in CrossFit. And injuries are one of the most frustrating, annoying things that holds back your process. So in this video, I will discuss new research that looked at which specific movements in CrossFit are associated with injuries in people. And I will also give two concrete tips on how to avoid those injuries. So whether you are a regular CrossFitter looking to remain injury free or an affiliate owner wanting to keep your athletes safe during the training, I think this video is super interesting for you. All right, let's get into it. Hi everyone, I'm Gomar. I'm a senior scientist at ETH Zurich, based in Switzerland. And for the last decade or so, I studied and taught different aspects of exercise physiology, and lately I've been more and more involved into the science of CrossFit and other high-intensity sports. So injury and CrossFit has always been some kind of a loaded battle. Why do I say that? To give you some perspective, in 2013, there was a paper published uh, entitled CrossFit-based high-intensity power training improves maximal aerobic fitness and body composition. So if you read that title, you think, okay, that's a quite a positive uh, paper or, or manuscript for CrossFit, so uh, no problems there, right? But if you read the manuscript well, it says that nine athletes or nine participants had to drop out because of overuse injury. And CrossFit Inc. or CrossFit the company didn't really, uh, first of all, like this. And secondly, they were questioning the integrity of the data collection and of the integrity of also the researchers. So they actually sued the, the National Strength and Conditioning Association, which is the association under which the, the Journal of Strength and Conditioning Research falls. And uh, at the end, they actually won the legal battle. And this paper that I just cited was retracted. So from, there, from then on, there was a lot of research on the injury rate and the injury prevalence in uh, CrossFit because obviously it's a, it's a new sport and you have to think if you are coming from a more conventional sport such as weightlifting or gymnastics and you all of a sudden see people doing these strange pull-ups or 30 clean and jerks for time which is completely something different than they're used to they were thinking this is a very dangerous methodology and it has to induce a lot of injuries but actually to many people's surprise I think if you look at the, the injury incidence of CrossFit, which is the amount of injuries that happens within a thousand hours of CrossFit training or sport training, it is very similar to similar sports such as weightlifting or gymnastics uh, or other similar sports such as uh, judo, for example. And it is actually lower than running, rugby or other more contact sports such as uh, basketball as well as uh, football. So why is this? I mean we can only hypothesize uh, on, on this subject obviously but I think a large part comes from the varied aspect of CrossFit because you do all kinds of different modalities and different exercises throughout the week even though some movements might be not super safe because you just don't do them every day like most other sports do you are actually not inducing a lot of injuries. Good. That said, it doesn't mean that, in, that injuries don't happen in CrossFit. Certainly they do. Many of you who are, who are watching this video are probably have been uh, involved in some kind of injury in CrossFit uh, or other sports. And it's very annoying because you cannot really progress anymore and you have to sit still and uh, it's absolutely not fun. So in this video, I will give you, let's say, two tips, two practical tips to try to avoid uh, or at least lower the risk of getting injured in CrossFit. And one of those is, uh, has to do with, let's say, the movements that we can use in CrossFit training. And why do I say this? Because there's a paper, and I will explain it in a minute, that showed that barbell work, such as snatches and clean and jerks, as well as box jumps, specifically box jumps and pull-ups, were more associated with injuries compared to other movements. So what does this exactly mean? In a paper with a, with a good title, I have to say, maybe they have been looking at my YouTube titles uh, to, to, to make up this, this title, it says, From Sweat to Strain, an Epidemiological Analysis of Training-Related Injuries in CrossFit. And what did they do? Very simple. They sent out a questionnaire to German CrossFit participants from all levels and also from a wide range of, uh, of ages, uh, ranging from 20 
to 40 years old. And they simply ask about their uh, typical anthropometric uh, data, their height, their weight, and so forth, but also how many injuries and which injuries they endured during their time they did CrossFit. So then obviously you can gather quickly a lot of data and this has been published now just recently. So what is interesting, uh, first of all, is to look at, let's say, which regions in the body most of the injuries happen. And here I have to say, I would have thought that there would be specific injuries that always come up. For example, shoulder strain or something uh, with your back or, I don't know, ACL rupture that, that were like the predominant injuries. But actually this, this was not true. If you look at the table, obviously I'm not, not going to read it here all, you see there's like 40 or 50 different injuries in all kinds of body parts, right? So injuries happen all over the place. But anyway, there were a couple that were a little bit more prevalent. For example, a lumbalgia at the spine at the pelvis. Most people have problems there. Also, that's because of the, the, the high amount of hinging in CrossFit, as well as shoulder sprains. We come back to that with the, the pull-ups, as well as wounds, uh, like actual wounds on the lower leg and, and, for example, on the knees. Also here, we come back in the, the next section. Good. So more interesting, which movements actually caused most of the injuries? And then it's very clear. It seems to be the barbell, right? The barbell snatch as well as the barbell clean or clean and jerk. 13 out of 146 cases came from the snatch and 12 came from the clean. So that's a quite a high number and that's something to look uh, for. Related to the body weight, one movement came up very clearly. This was the box jump. Box jumps, uh, 21 out of 146 cases were, let's say, uh, injury cases uh, were associated with the box jump. And that's obviously the wounds at the lower leg. That's also something you, mi you might want to think about. The severity of the injury is not really in taken into account here. Any injury ranging from a wound which heals in whatever a week towards, I don't know, a broken back or a ruptured bicep is an injury, all right? So this is important to, to notice. But anyway, the box jump is something that is associated with a lot of injuries. And then you also have the bar. And interesting to me, at least, it was mostly the bar pull-up. So 12 out of 146 cases were coming from the pull-up. Importantly, why is this, I think? That is because uh, the pull-up is just programmed a lot in CrossFit. And if you have a movement that comes up a lot, as I said already earlier in the video, there is going to be more chances of getting injured of that movement. Before I go into uh, tip two, like a real YouTuber, I was looking into my uh, channel analytics. And to my surprise, 73% of all the people who watch the videos are not subscribed. So I thought it was quite high. So that's why I would like to ask you to quickly subscribe to the channel if you like this type of evidence-based content. So tip two, be careful again with sudden jumps in training load. And this is maybe something that people often overlook. So here is a graph on how it should be. The training load should go up every week for let's say three weeks. We talked about this in my previous video that I just posted last week. So have a look there to, to understand better on how to determine your training load. But anyway, it has to go up, up, up for one, two, three weeks and then have a deload week and then go up again. That is your typical progressive overload that is applied in any sport, also CrossFit if you are training well. But life is life, right? Life happens and this doesn't always perfectly theoretically happen like this. For example, most of the times you have a nice increase in training load for one or two weeks and then a sudden drop because you are sick or you go on holidays for three weeks and then you come back and you think, man, I've been doing clean and jerks at 100 kilos for the last three weeks. I can do this again. And you pick up the weight again and your training load goes skyrocketing. And obviously, this is a very dangerous moment for yourself to get injured. Because there's actually some nice research from Mirwais Merab, who is a Dutch doctor in sport medicine. And I uh, had the opportunity to meet him last year during a, a small conference. And what he showed there and also in, in other published research is that sudden increases in training loads increase your odds ratio of getting injured. So it's not really how advanced you are or how much of a beginner you are in CrossFit. It's rather the sudden increase in training load, which is obviously not only the intensity, but also the volume and also the weight on the bar of the training. 
All right, so that is something I think you really have to be careful of. If people come back from injury or even just from holidays with reduced amount of training, watch out to increase the training load too much. Put your ego at the door. Instead of five training sessions that week, do two or do, do three to ease back into the training for one, two, three weeks and then go back to your previous weights. It is super important for injury prevention. Good, this brings us already to the take home message of uh, today. First of all, the injury rate or the injury incidence in CrossFit doesn't seem to be much higher than comparable sports, if there are actually comparable sports, and actually lower than most impact sports such as football, uh, running, uh, rugby, and so on. The at-risk movements in CrossFit are definitely weightlifting movements, box jumps, and also pull-ups. So if you are an affiliate owner, right, and you want to program a hero workout involving a lot of pull-ups, for example, Murph, typical one, right, where you do 100 pull-ups, make sure that your athletes build up the pull-up volume in the weeks preceding Murph or another hero workout. That brings us also to the second tip, which is obviously closely related to that, is that your training load has to be gradually increased and really watch out after periods of inactivity or reduced training load with sudden jumps in training load. Then it seems to be like that week or those two weeks seems to be the most prone for injury. So watch out for that. All right, if you made it this far into the video, thank you for your attention. Like the last couple of weeks, we are gonna ask a question of today related to the content of the video. If you answer the question, correctly in a Google survey that is linked in the description and also are subscribed to the channel, you have a chance to win a free month of What Science Training. I think that's quite a nice prize. Or according to your choice, a 101 consultation, which is worth $100. Uh, so for one minute of your time, I think that's a quite a good deal. So the question is as following. It's a little bit more of a thinking question. Let's say you have an athlete, right? And he typically trains five times a week in the affiliate. He always comes back and uh, is returning from a three-week holiday. He went to Thailand and didn't do any sports or any training. What would be the optimal schedule to come back into training, right? A, resume training the usual five times per week, but avoid exercises like snatches, box jumps, and pull-ups for the first two weeks. That's one option. Second option would be reduce the training volume to three times a week for the initial two weeks, uh, while still including these snatches, box jumps, and pull-ups. Third one would be to increase the training volume up to, let's say, six times a week to compensate for the time lost during that holiday training. The fourth one would be to ignore the coach's uh, rec recommendations and rely solely on the feedback of a whoop strap uh, and training only when you are fully recovered. You can reread the questions in the Google survey link below. That was it from my part today. Next week, we start with new training cycles within the hybrid training program, as well as a season functional fitness uh, training program leading up to the CrossFit Open. So if you're interested in training with us in evidence-based way, click the first link in the description. There's also a coupon code to get 15% off of your first training month. So I think that's a quite a good deal. And for people who want to get more insights on their own training in a more personal style, you can also book a one-on-one -on -one consultation with me via our uh, website. I opened this due to high demand. All right, thanks again for listening. See you in the next one. Ciao.